Heat distortion is a common problem. Every metal worker who uses heat to weld, bend or straighten metal must learn to cope with the stresses that are built into the work when it cools. It is a very important factor, one which affects both the quality of the work and the speed at which the job can be done. Bob Rita has 30 years experience and is a master craftsman in the art of panel beating and welding. Working in his Wanneroo workshop, Bob has developed the technique of heat distortion control and its use is a valuable tool in fast, high quality metal work repairs. His panel beating methods have greatly improved the quality of work done by his students. Hello, I'm Bob Rita. To weld panels can cause problems. It's the distortion that's the problem. The welding normally we can overcome. But the, the welding causes distortion. Now, if we progress through, we analyse what's going on, we can uh, learn to control it and even use it. It's uh, use it to our own advantage. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, light metal like such as this or heavy material such as this, the stresses still work the same. So now, uh, just sit back and relax. Watch what's going on. By the end of this film, I think you'll understand far more about distortion than you do right now. OK, we'll see you later. In this video, Bob Reader's method of heat distortion control is explained in careful detail. It is designed to help you improve both the quality of your work and the speed at which you work by avoiding the problems caused by heat distortion. Working with heat and metal can be dangerous. Care must be taken and a responsible attitude maintained while working in an environment such as this. Here are a few safety precautions to think about. A fire extinguisher should be on hand as well as a bucket of water set under the working area. It is recommended that safety glasses should be worn as well as earmuffs to protect against excessive noise damage. Use a flint to light the torch rather than matches or a cigarette lighter. Do not carry a lighter in your pocket because when working a stray spark could heat up the lighter and in turn it could explode. Long cuffless trousers covering boots must be worn to ensure against the dangers of hot scrap metal falling into the cuff or boot. Do not work in clothing made from flammable material. Excess out of metal or dag should be placed in a bin immediately. Have a first aid kit in the shed. Keep a clean, orderly environment. Keep these safety measures in mind when working. When heat is applied to metal, the metal will distort. When a single unrestricted metal bar is heated in the centre, the metal will firstly expand and then as it cools, contract back to its original length. When metal is heated, it expands. As heat is applied, the unrestricted bar expands past the line. If it is unrestricted, it will return to its original form when allowed to cool. This piece of metal is restricted at both ends. It is then heated to near molten temperature from applying extreme temperature around 3000 degrees Celsius.
The metal unable to expand lengthwise will tend to bulge or thicken up in the centre. When cooled, however, the metal will still contract lengthwise, actually becoming shorter or shrinking slightly. It drops out of the vise. If metal is heated and restricted from expanding, it will have a very positive shrinkage effect. A longer single metal bar restricted from expanding at both ends and clamped down to prevent bowing upwards, also when heated, tends to thicken up in the centre. There are a number of variables to consider when working with different thicknesses of metal. These variables include the tip size, the size of the flame and the angle at which the torch is held in relation to the metal. Generally, the thicker the metal, the larger the tip, the larger the flame. By the same token, the thinner the metal, the shallower the angle of the torch. These basic principles apply to welding, tacking and cutting. Within this video, Bob will be using a number 8 tip for cutting and a number 6 tip for welding. This video is concerned with the basic principle that when heat is applied to metal, the metal will distort. Problems such as bowing, wrinkling, buckling and the effects of spot tacking and welding that result when metals have been heated will be considered in this video. If metal is heated and restricted from expanding, it will have a very positive shrinkage effect. The metal still contracts lengthwise when cooled and shrinks slightly as can be seen here. This thickening effect in exaggerated form can be illustrated by observing what happens to a stick of plasticine when it is pushed together from both ends. This action of the metal thickening in the centre due to the restricted expansion in both areas applies equally to a cross, a star and finally to a full sheet of metal. The principle is the same in all cases. The surrounding metal works as a clamp or vice, further restricting expansion and creating distortion. The metal will thicken at the centre of heating. This heat distortion is the cause of many problems for metal workers. Traditionally, workers have coped with the distortion by beating the metal and by applying heat to other areas to cause compensatory shrinkage. 
Very few workers, however, understand enough about what is actually happening to the metal to produce the best possible results. They often rely more on instinct than science to tell them where they should apply heat or beat the metal. As a result, a great deal of time and effort is often wasted. Action to rectify heat distorted metal and return it to a flat plane must take place within the colour change area, the area where the metal actually thickens. Bob will demonstrate this most important point for us. First, he oxycuts the edge of a metal sheet. The resulting new edge is greatly distorted by the heat of the oxytorch, and this distortion affects the whole sheet. Bob now removes the heat affected area with tin snips. He only cuts in as far as the colour change line. Removal of just this small but vital area removes the distortion in the whole sheet. Unfortunately, simply cutting out the distortion caused by heat is impossible in many cases. Hammering out the distortion is the other answer. Again, the work to correct the distortion takes place within the colour change zone, not outside this area. Bob hammers out another edge previously cut by the oxytorch. He works thoroughly along the edge, but only within the immediate heat affected area. Treatment of this limited area again removes distortion in both the edge and the sheet as a whole. It is important that you develop a consistent working manner throughout your work so that you can minimise the uncontrolled variables. This will enable you to analyse any problems that may occur and quickly rectify the problem before progressing any further. Use correct arm and wrist movement to ensure your hammering is effective and consistent. Bad technique is not only inefficient, but can damage the job by causing problem hammer marks, which then have to be corrected later. There are a variety of hammers available, each with a specific function. The crown hammer, with a slightly curved head, applies more pounds per square inch pressure in the centre and can therefore be used more specifically to work certain areas. Care must be taken to avoid overhammering and dishing. The flat hammer has an even spread of PSI over its head and therefore is less likely to create dishing. Throw